Inelastic collisions are characterized by the object sticking. In this case, the ball was one object before the collision and broke off into at least three pieces after the collision. So in this type of inelastic collision, we went from one object to two or more objects. The other type of inelastic collision is to have two objects, like the ball and the mallet, and when those objects collide, they become one object. So in this case, you could have two objects having the collision resulting in one object. So we can go from two to one, or we can go from one to two. Both types are examples of inelastic collisions. Okay, I have now collected all three data points for the spring cart traveling along one meter after punching it. So we're going to use this information in order to determine our average velocity. And my three data points that I took was 1.46 seconds, 1.53, and 1.53. All of these are measured in seconds. All right, now this gives me an average time of 1.51 seconds. So with this piece of data, I can take this and put it in for my average time of 1.51 seconds, and I get an average velocity of the spring cart as being 0.66 meters per second. So now I have an idea of what the initial momentum of the spring cart is. Well, let's look again at our, at our problem here. We asked the question in the beginning that we've seen how an object having motion or velocity and obviously mass is described by momentum. But what happens to that momentum when two objects interact? We call an interaction of two objects a collision, and they're distinguished in two categories, an elastic and an inelastic. So in order to answer the question, what happens to the momentum? We need to consider the momentum initially and finally. Now, in the beginning, there were two, or excuse me, there were two objects present in our system. We had the spring cart and this cart just sitting here. And the momentum of the cart initial was zero kilograms meter per second because it was at rest. And we've just determined the momentum of the spring cart initial as being a reflection of MSC VSCI. And we now have our velocity in order to um, we now have our velocity in order to determine what our initial momentum is. Now remember that our what we determined here was the average. In order to get this velocity, we have to go two times that average and then put it in for this. We also need to know the mass of the spring cart. Well, to determine the mass of anything, you need to weigh it. Well, spring scales are a good way to do that. And so what we can do is, when it's time to run the numbers, we can hang these two carts from some spring scales that have, have measurements in grams and I use two of them because one is beyond the capability. It's more, it's more mass than the spring scale can handle. And you can see that we can get a pretty doggone accurate reading of the mass of this vehicle. So we have our means of determining all our information here. So this is a reflection of the initial momentum. And the initial momentum of the system is due exclusively to the spring cart. Now, after they collide, these two objects will have a momentum described by the sum of their masses. The mass of the spring cart plus the mass of the cart will be traveling at some velocity. We don't know what that is, but that's what we're gunning for. In the beginning, we have two objects, but the momentum is due only to one of those objects contributing any energy of motion or any momentum. And after the collision, we know that the momentum is due to two objects in motion, but they're stuck together traveling with one speed. 
All right, well, we have all the elements here. Uh, rather, we've got the velocity. Keep forgetting my vector symbol. I gotta stop being so careless. All right, well, we have a reflection of the velocity here. Now we need to determine what the velocity is for the combination of the two. So we're going to repeat the exact process of determining the average speed for the spring cart for the whole system of the spring cart after it collides with after it collides with the plane cart. And so this is what we're going to do. So clear our scale here. And I'm going to time this collision uh, happening right at one meter here. See, that's I put this cart right at one meter, okay, at the beginning of, of one meter. And I'm going to time it for one meter. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, not good. The cart system ended up only traveling about 0.7 meters. Well, that's a little bit, uh, not quite one meter that I needed. So what I'm going to choose to do is I am going to measure the time. I am going to measure the time it takes for this system to travel 0.5 meters or half a meter. And this right here is half a meter. So half a meter will be visually for you right here at this location. Okay, so I'm going to stop timing this point right here, this point where the two get joined at that point right there. So I'm starting at, at zero meters and timing it to 0.5 meters. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, well, rats, they didn't even collide this time. Okay, that's an alignment issue. There we go. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, all right, I have my first data point. Now what I'm going to do is collect the other two pieces of data and go ahead and follow through again and determine an average velocity for the combined spring cart cart mass.